One of the great things about science is it allows you to understand the universe from the subatomic to the intergalactic. It allows you to understand just how frail life is. Now, a mere minuscule change in the electrochemistry of the brain is the only difference between you being alive and dead. A live human body and a deceased human body have the same number of particles. Structurally, there's no difference. It allows you to understand how intolerant we are to acceleration, to changes in temperature, to pressure. Factors that become vividly obvious when you start thinking about putting humans anywhere in the entire universe other than on the thinnest of skins of the planet which we currently live on. That planet, where all of us live, from a modest distance away, rapidly becomes a point, and from outside the solar system, it's all but invisible. Hell, from a mere few tens of light years away, the sun is all but invisible. And that's everything for us. And that there is our galaxy, which is one galaxy out of billions. Yet when you fully appreciate the fragility and vulnerability of life, it gives you a different perspective. So in my last video, I showed that if the Enterprise D from Star Trek, a giant almost kilometer long spaceship, was in orbit around the moon, the Hubble Space Telescope would see it as something like this. Because it simply doesn't have the resolution to see smaller objects. And that's a physical limit. You can't see smaller objects than this with the Hubble. Well, Instrument Freak asked in the comments, I would like to see a video about the Hubble telescope. How can we see clear images from galaxies some billion light years away? They must be tiny in comparison to the one kilometer ship at 400,000 kilometers. Just curious. Which is actually a fascinating question. How is it possible that a telescope that can take images like this, this being the famous Hubble ultra deep field, couldn't see a giant spaceship in orbit around the moon. Well, I could go into some astronomical units like degrees, arc minutes and arc seconds and so forth. Actually, now let's take a quick look at this because some of this is fascinating. If you get a circle and chop it up into 360 portions, each one of those is a degree. So the moon and the sun both appear in the sky as about half a degree in size. Now, if you take one of those degrees and chop it up into 60, each one of those is an arc minute. And Jupiter from the Earth appears as about one arc minute in size. So this is pretty much a first for me. As you can see, the sun's pretty much full risen. And uh, so I had the telescope here doing a time lapse all the way up there on the moon. I happen to know Jupiter is right next to the moon, or fairly close to it. So I told the telescope to go find Jupiter for me. And thus he does. And so, there you go, that's Jupiter in the full light of day. So that really is Jupiter. Move the telescope a little. There you go, Jupiter. In the full light of day. And now if you take an arc minute and chop it up into 60, each one of those is an arc second in angular size. Now, how the parsec for those Kessel Run fans out there? It's a ship that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. Is just how far away you have to be to see the distance between the Earth and the Sun as one arc second, which turns out to be about three light years away. But yeah, the angular size stuff can be a bit confusing because they're fairly non-intuitive stuff. So let's do everyone a favor and keep this in simple ratios of how big it is and how far away it is. So for instance, the moon is about 4,000 kilometers across, not far off the size of the United States, and it's 400,000 kilometers away. So it's a size to distance ratio of about one in 100, which is interestingly about the same ratio as a fingernail at arm's length. So for the big enterprise to be the same angular size as the full moon, that is for its length to distance ratio to be one in 100, its length is about one kilometer, so it would have to be about 100 kilometers away, which is basically low Earth orbit, or about one hour's drive straight up. However, once you take that one kilometer and take it out to the distance of the moon, it's a size to distance ratio of one in 400,000. 
That's one in half a million. So again, let's use the moon as our yardstick because everyone's seen the moon and knows how big it is. How big is the Hubble Deep Field? Well, it was approximately one tenth the size of the moon meaning that had you actually pointed the Hubble at the moon, its field of view would approximately be 400 kilometers. And the big enterprise here is about one kilometer long. So let's see if we can do this. The Hubble deep field, if it was pointed at the moon, would be about 400 kilometers across. So half of that is about 200 kilometers. Half of it again is about 100 kilometers. Then 50, 25, 12, 6, 3, one and a half kilometers. And finally, just under a kilometer. So the enterprise at the distance of the moon would appear almost exactly the same size as the width of that green line. Now for the unsettling bit, for all of those desperately fighting for the control of a tiny quadrant of a pale blue dot. Fighting over which deity to pray to, which party to vote for, which culture war to fight, and just how quickly it can all end. A meteor may be 10 times the size of the Enterprise, 10 kilometers across. Hitting the Earth is an extinction level event comparable to the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. And by the time you can see it with one of the world's most powerful telescopes and it's heading towards you at a typical velocity at an object this distance from the sun, which is about 30 kilometers per second, but let's say, let's say 40 kilometers a second, just to keep the numbers easy. 40 kilometers per second. 400,000 kilometers to cover. You approximately have 10,000 seconds, four hours to make peace with yourself and reflect on what mankind has achieved before the end of the world. Because those thoughts will be the last thoughts of mankind. And there would be nothing, absolutely nothing, that mankind could do with all of its achievements except impotently watch the clock count down one second at a time. But that's a story for another and much scarier video. So, if you enjoyed this, feel good story. Six pints of bitter, and quickly please, the world's about to end. Remember, hug a puppy, think warm, happy thoughts, and for God's sake, live life today. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, because you may only have four hours left to do it, if that spot that the Hubble's just noticed is real. This must be Thursday. I never could get the hang of Thursdays. And of course, if you really enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, you can support this channel directly through Patreon. Just make sure you do it in the next four hours. Are you serious, sir? Do you really think the world's going to end this afternoon? Uh, yes, in just over three minutes and five seconds. Well, is there anything we can do? No, nothing. And with that, I'll leave you to spend those last four hours on Earth musing over the sheer majesty, not just of the universe, but the majesty of the technological masterpiece that made this. A work of art as much a work of art as the music you're currently listening to. Hundreds of man years of work culminating in a technological masterpiece, a telescope that travels about eight kilometers per second to give an insight into the universe that has only been available for a few years out of the entire history of mankind. And you are one of the privileged few to see the universe in such exquisite detail.